So there's there's a couple well, there's heaps of different forms of tying up. If you read tie, about tying up, there's a lot of different forms, but there's two main ones that will respond to nutritional management. So there's one um, called recurrent exertional rhabdomyolysis, which we just abbreviate to RER because that's easier. And this is the one that you see in um, it's the classic young nervous thoroughbred filly tying up. Um, and what happens is you get exercise plus excitement. Um, so, you know, when they, and it often happens when they get a little bit fitter and when they get fitter, they do tend to get a little bit more highly strung. Um, and then you get a disruption of muscle contraction mechanisms and the muscles contract more readily than they should and they tie up. So their muscles literally just contract and then they won't release and, and you see them getting around with their um, muscles tied up. So um, when muscles contract, calcium is released from the muscle cells and then to relax those muscle cells, it's taken back up. So it's happening really, really quickly because it's happening as they're um, running around. And it's thought that this is the mechanism that's faulty in an RER <laughs> horse. So there's something, something happens when the horse gets nervous um, and or excited, something happens with that calcium channel that it doesn't release and, and um, take back up calcium like it should. It's got nothing to do with calcium intake in the diet. Um, and it, it's very, very, um, like you can't, just feed more calcium or feed less calcium and, and manage it. The other type of tying up that you'll see in um, warm bloods, Arabians, quarter horses, heavy horses, standard bred horses, um, is one called polysaccharide storage myopathy. And we just abbreviate that, that to PSSM. So you get this one when you've got consumption of high starch, high sugar feeds. Um, and then they've got acute insulin sensitivity. So so where the insulin resistant horses, the insulin's there going, hello, muscle cells, open up and let more insulin, more glucose in and the muscle cells don't hear it. In these horses, it's like the insulin only needs to whisper, hello, it's a little bit too much glucose here. And they're so insulin sensitive that they seem to suck way more glucose into their muscle cells than they need to. And they get an abnormally high accumulation of glycogen in the muscles. So, so glycogen is like the muscles form of starch. The muscles put all the glucose molecules, join them back up together and form stuff called um, glycogen. What have I done? Um, and then with this abnormally high amount of glycogen, you get muscle damage. They don't know what the mechanism is. Um, and then that's when we see tying up. So... A lot of the time, horses with, sub, with um, PSSM, it's what we would call subclinical PSSM. Um, and it, it often just appears as a horse being a bit stiff or even lazy when it's being ridden. So they're not, like the thoroughbreds will be, can be wandering along and like literally seize up and can't actually walk anywhere. Um, really severe horses with PSSM will do that as well. But often if they've only got it mildly, they'll just feel lazy. They just won't want to go forward, um, they won't, they just don't seem to, to want to work very well. And they often have persistently high levels of um, blood CK, which the um, CK and the AST, the two muscle enzymes they look for, they should never ever leak out of the muscle cells into the blood. But when the muscles get damaged, when a horse ties up, it leaks out into the blood. And that's what, if your vet does a, a blood test for tying up, that's what they're looking for. It's stuff that should be in the muscle cells, but because the muscle cells have been broken, um, it's leaked out into the blood.